Lineups have been set, and the brights, the lights couldn't be brighter. College of Idaho hosting the semifinals of the Cascade Collegiate Conference tournament. They have not lost a game in this tournament in five years plus. Absolutely routed Northwest in the quarterfinal matchup. Back on Wednesday night. And now they face a Southern Oregon team who already took them down once this year. And we've got a fun one in store. Tell your Lundquist with you as we get ready for tip-off. Drew Wyman jumps center uh, against Dominic McGarvey, who wins the tip for Southern Oregon. Brett Holland, Brett Hollins, Cole McInich, Taryn Bradford, and Jordan Veening, the four to start the game for the Raiders. Empty possession, first time down. Yotes have gone with this starting five for about the last, pretty much since starting conference play, or really after that loss to Southern Idaho, deflected out of bounds. Ball stays with the Yotes. It's Samaje Morgan, Johnny Radford in the backcourt. Wings of Drew Wyman and Jake O'Neill and Tyler Robinette occupies the middle. O'Neill kicks back to Morgan in the corner. Has a mismatch that he likes. Eight seconds on the clock. O'Neill kicking back. Morgan for three, just off the back iron. Tracked down by McIninch. The only team in the conference to beat College of Idaho at any point of this season. Yotes have won 22 straight since dropping that first game in Ashland back in December. Cutting through, diving to keep the possession is McIninch. Ball tips out of the hands, last touched by Robinette. No change in possession. Shot clock stays at five. The Yotes have scored 100 or more points in eight of their last 11 times out. I will tell you right now, today is not one of those games. Southern Oregon and College of Idaho as Bradford barely gets that one off and rattles it through. First points of the game go to Southern, Idaho, Southern Oregon. Radford on the other end, just off back iron, pulled down by McGarvey. These two teams, the number one and number two scoring defenses in the conference. Deflection by Morgan, finds its way to Radford. Turnover on the Raiders. Radford over the top to Robinette. Can't control it well enough to tip it up and in off the oop. Brett Hollins over the top to McGarvey in an easy deuce. College of Idaho's defense has held opponents to just under 64 points per game. That is the ninth fewest in the nation. Southern Oregon allowing just over 70 per game. This is going to be an absolute dogfight. Southern Oregon out to an early 5-0 lead two minutes into the game. Morgan gets the second one to drop as well. First two points on the board for College of Idaho. One thing you'll notice about Southern Oregon's defense and what makes them so stingy is off of misses, they will go into a man defense. Off of makes, they fall into a zone. Really disrupts the tempo and the offensive flow for C of I. Pump fake, McIninch from the left wing. And the Raiders are out to a hot start. Up ahead, leaking out. O'Neal, other direction, takes contact, gets it to fall. Morgan tips it out of bounds, almost had a steal. starting to see how this one can easily 
shape out to be a slugfest between two defenses. Points will come at a premium. Typical zone defense that you see out of College of Idaho. Don't do a whole lot of mixing up. You will see some man. You will see some 1-3-1. One, one. And that 2-3 zone draws a shot clock violation and another turnover from Southern Oregon. O'Neal into the lane, elevates. Brought down Hollins, kicks ahead Bradford, will run the majority of the offense through his hands, 14 and black. McIninch wants another, has it. McIninch two for two from beyond the arc to start things off, and Southern Oregon has an 11-4 lead. And they fall into that zone off the make, Wyman a long range three just left. Bradford sixth in the conference at three and a half assists per game. And really doesn't turn the ball over much either. He's tied for first in the conference in assist to turnover ratio as Holland's little fall away hits. Bradford a 5.4 assist to turnover ratio tied with Caden Handren. Radford's fouled in the corner off the three ball. That one goes against Veening. And subs already due in for the Yotes. Bradford shoots just under 90% from the foul line. And he is dangerously close to that 50, 40, 90 mark. The coveted club, 50% from the field, 40% from three, 90% from the free throw line. He's about at 49, 42, and 89 right now in those given categories. Talk about efficiency. Two for three. Case and Rouse into the game. Double team, short corner. McGarvey now has a one on one. Kicks out Rouse back into McGarvey. Eight on the shot clock. Backs down Rogers, tries to go over the top. Rogers pulls down the board. Morgan trying to push tempo. Rogers, Germer checked into the game. Caden Handren would have come in for Radford. Underneath, Rogers with the right handed reverse. Off the dish from Samaj Morgan. Into the middle, McGarvey given space, kicks out Bradford, pump fake, step back, back iron, Rogers another board. Morgan has the one on one. Bradford into the lane, hesitating, throws it up, a wild shot, thought he got fouled by Rouse. Rouse leaking out the other direction. Into the corner, McInnich passes it up. Blythe, four and black, just had the hit ball in his hands. Wide open, McIninch can't hit his third. Morgan tracks it down. A two on one. Goes up with the left, no. Robinette to finish. Energy will be dramatic in the building. A bump from Robinette on the shot from McGarvey. Call the foul. And three more subs due in to give a full non-starting five on the floor when we come back. 13-10, so Southern Oregon on top early.
McGarvey has two free throws coming out of the timeout. And the Yotes have simply not gotten the looks that they typically have. And in large part just due to the shifting defensive looks that Southern Oregon provides. Talking to Coach Colby Blaine before this one and said first time in the loss against Southern Oregon, they mixed up their defense so well against us. And it didn't allow us to get into our tempo and stick to our game plan. Second time they saw him, it was a rout here in this building. It was an 82-50 win for the Oats. And the Raiders simply didn't switch up their defenses. Peoples gets sent to the floor. Foul called on Khalil Chapman. Chapman has had some breakout games at points this season. In the win earlier in the year, Chapman had 19 points, pulled down 10 boards to go with it. Handren, Wilson, and Peoples, the three recent subs for College of Idaho. Handren wants a post up. They work action off ball. Handren elevates, front iron. Stratton Rogers can't elevate for the offensive board. Seven minutes off the clock in the first half. Hollins dumped down to Veening. Veening finds Blythe in the corner. Tip in on the backside by Hollins. Hollins then deflects it out of bounds. Officials point in direction of the Oats. Southern Oregon has made 13 or more threes in five of their last six games. The task at hand for the Yotes defense hold them to nine or fewer. That's their season average on three points made. Wilson has a size advantage, kicks out Peoples. Peoples in the lane, a little floater, no. Rogers tips it once, pulled down finally by Veening. Into the middle, Blythe goes at Wilson, shows the ball, pivoting. Kicks out to Rouse. A lot of switching in this zone. Rouse pull up three. And Peoples there. Handren on the drive. Not enough touch. Foul on the floor will go against Khalil Chapman. Or no. They'll get it on Rouse with a push, so on the baseline, and Southern Oregon head coach Matt Zozel is not pleased with the call. 2-3 zone on the baseline, out of bounds. Peoples, left wing. Such active zones by both teams. Trying to overload one side or the Yotes. Handren gets into the painted area, knows he has to go. Throws up the left-handed baby hook and it falls. Back within two. This game could be played within a shoebox. Ten points on either side, probably the most that you will see of a lead in either direction. Into the middle, Chapman goes into the body of Wilson. Has to reconsider, then travels along the baseline. Picked up that pivot foot. Just a little full court token pressure to slow down the Yotes. Pretty much just extending the top two of that 2-3 zone. Oh, Germer was asking for it on the weak side. Peoples, long three, cans it. Peoples coming into his own this year, calling his own number, 15-14. First lead of the game for the Oats comes just over nine minutes into the ballgame. Kick by Stratton Rogers. 
McIninch and McGarvey and Bradford all due back in for Southern Oregon. And you've seen some electric first half performances from the Yotes this season. And clearly this one not like the others. Underneath, reverse block by Paul Wilson. Outlet, Caden Handren doesn't have the numbers. Peoples spinning back towards the middle, kicks to Wilson, swings it around to Handren. Handren now looking for Germer on the post up. McIninch giving no inch. Germer takes the contact, leaner. And Southern Oregon in the other direction. McIninch, no room, skip pass, Blythe, right wing, bottoms. That is the one thing with this Yote zone is the skip passes from wing to wing are certainly available. And Southern Oregon is recognizing that early. All five starters check back into the game for C of I. Just past halfway through this first period. Two-point deficit for the Yotes. Brett Hollins back in for Blythe after hitting his clutch three. And any scoring boost they can get from those numbers on the bench, whether it's Rouse or anyone else, they will take. Don't have to put all the onus on the two bigs, McGarvey, and Veening on the inside. Veening in the paint. Shimmy Shake throws it up with the left. Got fouled, I believe, by Drew Wyman on the contact. Now they're going to get Johnny Radford coming in from the back side, reaching in. And the Oats do such a good job defensively of having their guards come down from the top of the zone, dig, and kind of short double those bigs in the low post and Radford just a little late getting there right before Veening was going up with it he misses the first long Veening misses both, serenaded by the College of Idaho student section. Wyman into the lane, extends with the right hand and ties it back up at 17. Yotes have won their last 11 games by an average of 32 and a half points. No such blowout tonight. Kick back, Wyman, straight on, you bet! Inside to a posting up, Veening. Going at Robinette, lowers the shoulder. Robinette denies him. Leaking out, Radford draws one. X pass to O'Neill, clears out space, finishes with the left. Blaine wanted more pressure from his two guards of Radford and Morgan. Anytime Eastern Oregon has one man dribbling it up against pressure, he'd like a second defender there. And McGarvey goes through the contact. Foul called on Jake O'Neill, just caught a little elbow.
Back on December 1st, McGarvey was a force. 17 points, four rebounds. He's got four points so far. McIninch leading the way for Southern Oregon with his two threes. Six points, McGarvey knocks it in. Southern Oregon shot over 50% in that win. In the loss, no such luck. Three balls good, Drew Wyman. Or pardon me, Johnny Radford with the three. And then Samaje Morgan draws the charge. That'll take us to the under seven. Media timeout. Yotes going on a little bit of a run here. 25-19 momentum on their side. Starting five, still on the floor for the Yotes here. 641 left in the first half and a six point lead for the College of Idaho. Robinette blocked way up high by McGarvey. Pinned that one on the side of the backboard. Brett Hollins kicks to McGarvey, lines it up from the corner, cans another. Southern Oregon is letting it fly. Morgan into the paint, dumps it to Robinette through his hands. Oh, and they say it was deflected by McGarvey. Ball stays with the Oats, 17 shot clock. Bradford into the corner, double team, kicks to O'Neal, stolen away by McIninch. Brad Bradford up ahead, kicks it to Hollins. Hollins elevates and finishes with delay. The Oats want to go fast off of these makes. They don't want to let Southern Oregon fall into their zone and get steady. Morgan left open, his leaner off the front iron and through. Collins has a mismatch with McGarvey. Oh, high off the glass. Foul called on Khalil Chapman on the weak side. Wyman was sent to the floor. Chapman has words for the official. Khalil Chapman picks up his second, still having a relatively animated conversation with the official. He's checked out as Veening comes back in. Robinette, a three, circles out. Under five minutes left in the first half. These last five minutes will control the momentum going into halftime. The middle 10, a concept in basketball. You have to win the last five minutes of the first half plus the first five minutes of the second half. And how crucial it is to end on a good note and then start the second half on a good one as well. Foul called on Jake O'Neill underneath. Stratton Rogers will check in for him, make sure he doesn't pick up his third early in this first half. Radford there. Morgan along the baseline. Tried to kick it back, no one there. Bradford leaking out with Hollins, dumps it down at the last second. Tips around, falls to Morgan. Put back was no good by Southern Oregon. Morgan transition, pull up from the mid range.
Interesting <laughs> choice of pass from Feeney. Gets intercepted by Radford. Robinette, right elbow. Dribble handoff with Radford. Robinette, front iron. Well, you can tell just by watching this game, momentum is hard to come by. Both teams have such good defenses, they just stall out these runs. Down low, McGarvey, a post up, goes to the middle, blocked partially by Wyman, tipped up, ends with McIninch as he tracks it down. Bradford with four, floater, too strong, Hollins, had it ripped away by Robinette. Morgan the other direction. Morgan into contact. He gets blocked by McIninch. Five Yotes check in, leaving Stratton Rogers. 3-10 left in the first. Starters get a big round of applause from the Yotes faithful. Elijah Jackson into the game, getting his first minutes for Bradford. Jackson, the most efficient three-point shooter for the Raiders. Peoples in the corner, takes a dribble, hands it. Double team. Rouse finds McGarvey. Jackson, who shoots right around 45% from three. Occupying the high post. Trading out with McIninch. Deflection. Germer credited with the steal. An eight-point lead. Handrin to make it more. Germer! Bang! Runs are always answered. How will Southern Oregon respond? Rouse. Back iron. Wilson down with the rebound. Finds Handren. Handren continues to push pace. Germer, another just off. Tempo really picking up. McIninch takes a body blow. Rouse to Blythe. Out to Jackson. Jackson sky high three over the top of the backboard and out of bounds. Running Peoples off of multiple screens, trying to get him open. He steps behind Wilson. Now on the drive, in the lane, blocked by McGarvey. Tipped around, off of Peoples' head. Tipped out by Hollins. Oh, and the officials might have to confer here. Brett Hollins is going at it with the student section, trying to get the ball back. They're going to stick with the call. Say it was last touched by Peoples. Zozel is off his rocker, mad at the student section who's going after Brett Hollins. Jackson left wing, McGarvey in the corner, gets past two into the body back underneath the backboard and they're going to call a body blow on Paul Wilson. Certainly looked from my vantage point like there was. It, it looked like Paul Wilson. Certainly there is verticality but it looked like he went into the body of McGarvey. And McGarvey now a chance to bring this back within single digits. Good on the first. Yeah. 
And with the way these teams are playing defensively, you have to think this is a race to 70. First team to 70 certainly has the best shot. Yotes halfway there, up by nine. Rogers, a one-on-one -on -one from the high post, goes over the top, off the window, good. Looking to get into the high post. Rouse has to retreat back to the perimeter. Jackson, right wing. Rouse, long three. Wow. Shot clock turned off. The Oats a chance to extend this. At the moment, looks like Eastern Oregon might be happy if they can keep this eight point deficit into halftime. Peoples with five seconds, gotta go. Gets into the lane. Denied by Blythe. Blythe from three-quarter court off the shot clock above the backboard. Eastern Oregon, a clutch three from Rouse to bring this back to an eight-point game. An interesting one on the way. Expect anything different. We'll be back for second half action. Second half about to get underway in just a few seconds. College of Idaho going with their starting five. Morgan, Robinette, Wyman, O'Neill, and Radford. Southern Oregon is 100% in this game. They're only trailing by eight, 20 minutes to go naturally with the second half, but turnovers hindered them. They had six to College of Idaho's two, but they shot the lights out. Six for 13 from three. Six of their nine made field goals came from beyond the arc. So if they can start pouring in or at least being a little more efficient on the inside, they should be able to climb back into this. Robinette's tip in somehow falls through. And back up 10 go the Oats. Robinette's got four points. Samaje Morgan leads the way with those on the floor with six. Radford and Wyman have five. O'Neal with four and McGarvey pours in another. He's got 12 to lead all scores. McGarvey well on his way to a double-double. 12, re 12 points, seven rebounds. Wyman in the corner, swings it back around Radford. X cut. Robinette got him in the air, can't finish. O'Neal the offensive board, surrounded on all sides, somehow gets it up. Robinette once again with the putback. Bradford working against the zone. McIninch had a hot start with two threes in the first couple minutes and then went cold. Bradford finally gets a little mid-range to fall. Robinette after two tip-ins, just short on the corner three. McGarvey takes contact, still finishes. Southern Oregon bench wanted a foul and one. Back within six, Roaring Raiders. Morgan, Radford, Bottoms. The inside out. You draw defenders in the paint. You kick out, you make the extra pass, and McGarvey can't answer. O'Neal swings it around to Wyman. Radford, short corner O'Neal, weaves his way through. Robinette left wide open, no one near him, circles out. O'Neal there to put it back up and in. Jake O'Neal, one of the most active offensive rebounders in this conference, arguably the nation, undersized at 6'4", but the leaping ability makes up for so much lost height. 
Bradford in the middle. Long gets his own board, misses the putback. And then Veening fouls O'Neal on the rebound. Bradford shaking his head after that wide open put back was way off the mark. Screen on the outside of the top of the zone. Morgan weaves his way in. Left hand, not enough English. Last touch by Robinette, apparently. Looking inside for Vini, gets double teamed. Now has a one on one. Cutting from the opposite side is McGarvey. Takes contact, block is called, count the bucket. Bradford got there a little late, didn't set his feet. And McGarvey able to send him to the floor and then send himself to the free throw line. Chance to cut this back to an eight point deficit. Can't convert. McGarvey struggling from the free throw line today. He's at 16 points. Robinette at the high post has enough space if he chooses to take it. O'Neal now with eight seconds on the shot clock. Morgan calls for a screen. Has to shake and bake, spins baseline, throws it up, got fouled by Brett Hollins. A bailout foul as Morgan was nearly out of control with one second on the shot clock. Southern Oregon's going to have to find someone else who can help on the offensive end. McGarvey is doing his share with his 16, leads all scores. Someone's going to have to start making a couple shots. McIninch hit two threes early. Bradford is starting to find his touch from the mid-range. He's got five points. No one else really doing a whole lot for the Raiders. Morgan two for two, puts the Oats back up 11. Veening deflected. Wyman giving chase, not able to keep it in bounds. Foot was on the end line, sideline rather. Germer, Handron, Rogers check in. Robinette and Morgan stay. McIninch, pull up, didn't really have space. Oh, McGarvey somehow found a way to get that to fall. Morgan, left wing, bang. Southern Oregon just can't make a dent. Any bucket is answered, plus a few. 12 point lead for the Yotes. McIninch into the painted area. Hollins draws two, kicks back. McIninch weaves his way in, takes contact from Handron. He'll go to the foul line. McIninch at the free throw line. He's got to see a couple go through. 
it's not even really that he's gone cold. He just hasn't had any looks since those first couple. And confidence builder is always at the free throw line as he goes two for two. Swinging it around the perimeter, Rogers, short corner, gets into the lane, kicks to Germer in the corner who mishandles. Wilson, Peoples, round out the non-starters on the floor for C of I. And Blythe back in. Moy McGarvey must be tired. They need him on the floor as much as possible, so he'll probably not be out for long, probably just until the next media timeout, likely by the next whistle. Veening going at Wilson, lowers the shoulder, cuts through, no, no foul. Rogers in transition, can't finish with the right. Six minutes off the clock in the second half. Rodgers will have two. And Zosel is hot. Wants the refs to call it on both sides. Rodgers up to five points. Chance to add on. And rattles in the second. Two for two trip for the lefty. One, three, one zone. Yotes mixing it up. Blythe. Overloading one side is Southern Oregon. Hollins had an opening, goes underneath to Veening. Clears out space, can't finish. Wilson down with the rebound. Leaks out. Caden Handron takes a body blow. Refs letting him play that time. No foul trouble really for either side. Germer. Halfway through the shot clock. Handron crossing over, backing down, kicking out. Peoples lost the handle. Has to recover, gets double team, kicks back Germer, three on the shot clock. Oh, mama! At 6 8, Germer uncontested. 15 point lead, and Colby Blaine's getting the crowd up. Oh, poked away, but Germer caught too much arm on Mackinich. And that'll take us. To the first media timeout of the second half. 12.56 left on the clock. And the Oats are up 15. Nice little run heading into the break. We'll be back. Southern Oregon out on the floor early after the timeout. All five non-starters providing this run for the College of Idaho. Germer knocking down that three. Paul Wilson pulling down defensive boards. Rogers from the free throw line. Everyone playing their part. And it is so evident when non-starters know their role, stick to it, because that's what they do best. Rouse rattles in a three from the corner. Southern Oregon is going nowhere. All they need is a couple stops and they are 100% back in this thing. Wilson turns and faces, lowers the shoulder on Chapman. Gets deep positioning and then's fouled. Chapman picks up his third personal. I think he's played five minutes and picked up three fouls. And he has been going back and forth with these officials all night long.
Wilson has really good touch from the free throw line. I've been impressed with him all year long. He is the last Yote to play minutes and half points. I think I spoke too soon. Oh, they're going to say it was a lane violation on Southern Oregon. So Paul Wilson's free throw air ball is negated. Wow. Officials will make sure they made the right call there. And that is a really tough one to read if you are Southern Oregon because... Well, I mean, really, you just have to wait for the ball to release from his hand. And now they're going to call it off. Oh, they're going to... They just said they're going to go to the possession arrow. I don't know what that rule is. But off of a air ball on the free throw... I think it was a double lane violation by both C of I and Southern Oregon. So they went to the possession arrow, which gave possession to Southern Oregon. Deflected by Rogers, poked away by Peoples. A three on one. Peoples dumps down to Germer, who finds space. Oh, he blew the chipper, but Rogers is there to clean it up. Haven't seen McGarvey for an extended period of time. Long as he sat on the bench tonight. McAninch double teamed inside, poked out of bounds by Handron. Stops the possession. Eight seconds left on the shot clock for Southern Oregon to get a shot off. Brett Hollins will come back in for McAninch. Back into a 2-3 zone. College of Idaho certainly mixing up their looks. Chapman finally a positive offensive possession as he will draw the foul from Paul Wilson and have two shots at the free throw line. Oh my, long and strong on the second by Chapman after a good looking first free throw. 14 points the lead for the Oats. Foul called underneath on Blythe as he hooked Caden Handron. Foul occurred underneath the free throw line so a baseline out of bounds for the Oats. Rogers is left wide open. Now Peoples in the corner. They, they didn't even run a play. They just stood there and still found an open look. Stratton Rogers, the offensive rebound, averaging one and a half a game, top five in the conference. Handron on the drive, slows himself down, tipped out by Wilson. Peoples thought about it. Swings it back around, Germer. Peoples contested three. Didn't have a chance. Wilson, another offensive board. Inside Peoples. Lefty layup's good. Assist by Stratton Rogers. Peoples up to eight points. Back into the 1 3 1. McGarvey back at the scorer's table. Checking in at the next whistle. Chapman double teamed in the short corner. Nowhere to go. Foul called on Caden Handren reaching around the body. Caden, 
And that timeout will take us to the floating media timeout in the second half. 10-26 left in the game. Yotes up 16 and in control. College of Idaho up 16, 61-45, almost 10 and a half minutes left in the ball game. Semifinals, winner plays in the finals on Tuesday night. They will play the winner of Oregon Tech and Lewis Clark State. If you're joining us from snowy Ashland, we appreciate you being here. Tell your Lundquist with you on the mic. And Southern Oregon far from out of this game. College of Idaho might be in control, but these Raiders can catch fire and quickly. Chapman trying to do his part. Goes way over the top of Wilson. Offensive board by McGarvey. The difference he makes. Rouse has hit a couple. He goes back iron. Chapman can't pull it down off the offensive glass. Peoples then in the lane. Poked last by Brett Hollins. Andron into the lane, kicks it to a cutting. Rogers, who blows the bunny, then dives on the floor to get possession. Jump ball is called. Possession arrow in favor of the College of Idaho. Or rather, no. Colby Blaine was on top of it and called a timeout. So not quite a minute coming off the clock. We're going to stay here and... Let you have a look at our half court shots. Five contestants, five students, will have a chance at $1,000 out of the pocket of Yotes head coach Colby Blaine. A little rock, paper, scissors to see who gets to go first there on the logo. All right, purple hat, you're first. Just don't miss short. Oh, my goodness. Just chucked it left-handed. I mean, he's probably lefty, but oh, goodness. I mean, give it a running start. Here we go. Oh, that's way beyond half court and way short. Okay. Got it halfway. Oh, and here's the last one. Yeah, Colby Blaine is safe. Not a single one made contact with net, rim, backboard, or padding. It's a good thing College of Idaho doesn't have open tryouts. Still a 16-point lead for the Yotes. 9.44 left in the game. Southern Oregon still plenty of time to make a move. The other semifinals tipped off an hour after this one. They're halfway through the first half up in Lewiston, Idaho. Paul Wilson, the back down, the baby hook, rattles it in. Paul Wilson, his first field goal off of makes this second unit going into the 1-3-1. The, they love the way it looks with Wilson in the middle, Rogers at the top, just giving chase. Down low, McGarvey kicks back Hollins. Picked up as they fall into a 2-3 zone. What communication on the defensive end. McGarvey through contact, tipped up, pulled down Wilson. Hmm? Three ball just off. Germer tracks it down another offensive board. Peoples off again. Blythe to Bradford. They need it. Too strong. Starters are set to come back in at the next whistle for C of I. Rogers in the lane, lowers the shoulder. A block is called and one.
Boy, officials this season have been calling that football move, like lowering the shoulder into the chest of the defender. They're, they're calling those offensive fouls all the time. I thought that's what the whistle was for. But Rodgers will have a chance here, the old-fashioned three-point play. He's into double figures at 10 points. The scoring dispersion has been special for C of I all season long. But if you just look at it tonight, I mean, Samaj Morgan and Stratton Rodgers are tied with 11 points. You look right behind, Johnny Radford has eight, Dougie Peoples has eight, three Yotes have six with Robinette, O'Neal, and Germer. Everyone has scored who has been in the game. Twenty-one point lead. Bradford into the lane. Kicks it out to Hollins. Wyman there. Morgan pushes him off. Robinette had contact on the ball from the backside, and then the putback is too strong. Wyman pulls it down. O'Neal. Oh! Took off from too deep, but still able to adjust in the air. Veening taking a bump underneath from Robinette. Foul called. And that is the seventh personal, so should be a one and one here. Or rather, that is just the sixth. So both teams, no more fouls to give before the single bonus. Veening to Mackinich, drives baseline, kicks back to Veening in the middle, jump stop through two, count the bucket and the foul. So the Raiders may not have been able to completely neutralize the Yotes offense with their defensive adjustments throughout the game. Veening misses another free throw on the day. But really the big hurt for Southern Oregon has been allowing all these offensive rebounds by the Yotes. Morgan, so shifty. O'Neal. And Morgan got caught up on O'Neal's cut back out to the perimeter. Wyman a pump fake. Kicks back Robinette from the corner. And Hollins, big boy, rebound. McIninch a jump stop. Kicks to Hollins. Enough English to get it to fall. Oh, and then Hollins a little gesture to the student section. Radford will put an end to that. Oh, just long. Hollins has something to prove. Kicks it to McGarvey. That's too much space for him. Still misses. Man-to-man -man defense for the Raiders. Bradford in the short corner. Morgan likes this matchup. Attacks him. Step back, step through, and just off. Didn't have enough of an angle. McIninch cuts towards the middle. Switched off onto Robinette. Swings it around. McGarvey finds Hollins left wide open. They're not even going to bother. No wonder. And body language is saying it all, is saying it all for Southern Oregon. Officials are do they just call a 10 second they did Samaj Morgan brought the ball up too slow wow so now Southern Oregon will take it over just 20 on the shot clock Brett Hollins looks almost defeated in between plays McGarvey in the middle. Trying to find some sort of space. Creates it on the fadeaway. O'Neal tracks down the rebound. 
Gosh, he is so good at that. Just has an innate sense of bounces off the iron. Energy has nearly completely left the building. Wyman's little baby hook, there it is. Into the high post, Bradford tries to drive on Wyman, not many get past that man. Holland's inside, McGarvey going to the middle, baby hook too short. Wow, what a finish by Veening off the air ball. Count the foul too. Johnny Radford picks up his third personal. Veening has missed all four free throws today. Mackinich able to save it off of the long rebound. And Veening has given up some beachfront property in, he in his own head to the student section. Timeout called by Southern Oregon as they trail by 17, four and a half minutes to go. Non-starters come back into the game for the Yotes. We'll be back after this last break. Four and a half minutes remain. Stratton Rogers will inbound. Southern Oregon has to pick up the pace, pick up the pressure of this, this game, force a few more turnovers. Peoples, Radford, or pardon me, Peoples, Rogers, and Handren easily break the full court pressure. Good cut from the opposite wing. Rogers lost the handle on the way up. Cross court pass, Peoples. Five to go. Slap hurt across the arena. Finally called on the backside. People strings in the first. Not a rim was skimmed. Dougie Peoples two for two. Ten points for the freshman. Back to the one three one zone. Bradford in the lane, dumps it down. McGarvey throws it down hard. Rogers had it poked away by Blythe. Deep outlet to Bradford. They're going to have to start hucking up some, some shots here. Blythe in the lane. No look, pass out to Bradford. Oh, I think Blythe was trying to lob that to McGarvey and threw it about 10 feet too high. Three minutes left. 17 point lead. Yotes looking for their sixth consecutive finals appearance. Wilson got him in the air. Foul called. Two free throws ensue. Foul 
Okay, that grazed rim. It grazed rim. We'll give it to him. It grazed rim. And then good on the second. Bradford letting it roll out for a little bit. But against this 1-3-1, one, one, Southern Oregon simply has not been able to find looks. Blythe finally rattles one through. And a timeout called by Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon is 8 for 20 from 3 this game. They were 6 for 14 in the first half and simply have not found those openings. The rebound battle heavily in favor of the College of Idaho. 43 to 30 the Yotes lead in the rebounding category. 12 offensive rebounds. And looking at what the Yotes have done, three players in double figures, Samaj Morgan, Stratton Rogers with 11 apiece. Rogers also pouring in eight rebounds, Dougie Peoples with 10 points. Tyler Robinette coming up on a double-double. He's got six points, eight boards, another eight rebound performance by Jake O'Neill and eight points to go with it. I mean, if you just, you just can't beat this team when they're rebounding the way they are. They just don't give you second chances. This is a College of Idaho team who averages almost 14 offensive rebounds a game. That's number one in the Cascade Collegiate Conference by a bit of a margin. Three on two, Rodgers will slow it down instead. Sakes take some time off the clock. Pretty much every Raiders defender is just trying to poke the ball away and they're gonna hack a Wilson. Put him on the line for a one and one. And with that, Robinette will go to check in, likely to get a little better free throw shooting on the floor. Wilson's front end is good. I mean, when they go in, they look pretty, but the misses are terrible. Rogers tipped it up off the glass. Brett Holland steals it away, and then a foul is called on Stratton Rogers. Johnny Radford, Tyler Robinette come back in. Dougie Peoples takes a seat. And this seems like it'll be the unit to close things out. Championship game will come on Tuesday, 7.30 local. Hollins goes two for two. <laughs> Rogers trying to get into the hands of the best free throw shooter in the conference, Johnny Radford. They get it across half court, just over two minutes remain. 14 point lead, crazier things have happened 
Radford's floater, no, tipped out by Rogers. And Caden Handren will take the air out of the balloon. Radford, long range three, no. Handren tried to pull it down with one hand. Brett Hollins ends up with it. Hollins into the lane, can't finish with the left, tipped around, finally up. No, it rolled out off the hand of McGarvey. Bradford ends up with it, skip pass to Hollins, kicks it to Blythe. McGarvey short corner, defense just does not stop. Hollins splits two defenders and gets fouled. Rogers wanted a leak out the other direction. Alex Germer is credited with the foul. Nope, Stratton Rogers is credited with the foul. And a timeout by Colby Blaine. Wants to get Drew Wyman into the game. And let's take a second to look at what's happening in the other semifinal at the moment. Lewis Clark State is hosting Oregon Tech, the number two and three seeds in this conference tournament. And Oregon Tech is up by 16 in the first half. Oregon Tech 18 and four in conference play. Lewis Clark State 19 and three. So at the moment, Oregon Tech in control. The winner of that will play the winner of this game. What is shaping up to be yet another finals matchup in the J.A. Albertson Activity Center. Oregon Tech with 55 seconds left in the first half is up 47-29. Oregon Tech is shooting over 60% from the field. Oregon Tech has 20 made field goals in the first half. Southern Oregon in this full game has 21 made field goals. Hollins drops in another free throw. Looks bored doing it. And that one rims out. Gets the ball to Radford in case Southern Oregon wants to extend and draw out this game. And I think both teams know where this is heading. Wyman, right wing three. Hollins the rebound. And Hollins was fouled by Radford. So Hollins once again will go to the free throw line. He's at nine points on the evening. Hollins, another one on the way. Misses short. Offensive rebound, Bradford. No need to foul. And puts it up and in. Clock continues to run. 10 second or 10 point lead for C of I. Up ahead, Robinette. Left wide open. Flushes it home. That'll just about do it. Bradford fires from way deep. Off the back iron. Handren pulls it down. Shot clock is off. And the College of Idaho Yotes 
will make their sixth consecutive appearance in the Cascade Collegiate Conference Finals. They will play host to the winner of Oregon Tech and Lewis Clark State. That one at halftime at the moment, and Oregon Tech up big. Another victory for C of I. They have won 17 straight games in just this tournament. That's their 23rd straight on the season. No signs of slowing down the Yotes. 76-64, the final score for everyone here helping out with the broadcast. I'm Tyler Lundquist. We appreciate you joining us. We'll see you Tuesday night for the finals between the College of Idaho and either the Oregon Tech Owls or the Lewis-Clark State Warriors. We'll see you Tuesday.